Welcome to A Closer Look. My name is Lou Settlemeyer. This is Dar Nevergall. <laughs> Welcome to another edition. Yeah. You know, Mr. Miller, Mr. Nevergall, yeah. the Emmys were this week. Huh? We didn't yeah. win one. No. No. If there was an Emmy, however, for toleration, yeah. our producer, director, Ben Wright, yeah, uh, should have won one. Yeah, he yeah. should have got it. He's yeah. been tolerating us since. Very patient with us. Isn't yes. It? Since we August, I think, when we started this. Okay. What do you got? All right, I got my wristband here. Ah. It says here, I am Mark Shine, yeah. and... Were well, you going to signal me or what? No, I gotta, am Mark Miller. You got to signal me. I got the wristband. You got to... You want to play? I want to play. All right, here we go. Okay, That's you score. I, right. Okay. 26, throwback, X, post. Touchdown. That's a real play. That's a real play. Yeah. Okay. I got another one. I got another one. I got another one. Kit Kat bars. I'm hungry. <laughs> Give me some food. <laughs> Kit Kat bars. That's a good one. All right. Kit Kat bars fuel a closer look. Yeah, they do. Right. Okay. So, all right. So seriously, what is this? I see coaches yeah. with this. I see players with this. What, what do we do with these? Well, they're, they're wristbands, and they, they put a lot of different things on there, mostly plays, formations, plays, maybe some two-minute stuff. But, you know, why? You'll see some teams wear them. Some teams don't. Some teams signal from the sideline. I think a lot of coaches think that their signals will be secure if they use those, right? Because yeah. they're signaling a number. The player looks at the number. It tells them to play in the formation. But if you signal that same number over and over again, the defense doesn't care what that play is called they just know you're going to throw the ball over the middle or you're going to run a screen play so they're not, it's not any more secure signaling than than doing the the long hand signals i think but it's a, it is a good way to speed up the offense all these offenses want to go right away prevents them from having to go in the huddle and have the quarterback talk so they can signal it out there and either just the quarterback wears it and then he'll tell the other guys what to do or if you don't want your wide receivers coming into the huddle or they just want to stay out there you can put wristbands on the skill kids some teams have them on everybody and they look that you know you'll see them get the signal and they'll look at their wristband even defenses i've seen you know, they'll, they'll say, okay, we're going to blitz them. Okay, oh, that means I'm blitzing. Okay, so that's just a way to communicate in a very quick way. Uh, it does secure it a little bit. I've even seen a baseball team have wristbands on. Instead of the third base coach giving signals to yeah. bunt or steal, they give them a wristband number and they all do this. So it's just kind of a fad now, but it's, you know, it's, it's usable. Yep. You talked about the speed up. We talked to Josh Spencer 10 days ago over at USV. They only use it in two-minute drill. Yeah, and that's when I coached, that's all we used it for, yeah. too. We sewed them. We didn't make those things. We had to sew them in our cloth wristbands. Yeah. But that's why we used it in the no-huddle two-minute hurry-up offense. So. All right. And the Cleveland Browns will wear them this week so the offensive players can go. My quarterback this week <laughs> is. Yeah, they're going to put a roster in their <laughs> yeah. wristband so they know who they're playing yeah. with. This is a real one, right? Yeah. Your son got yeah. it for me. There's actually a play called 570 Jerk 770 Sluggo. I, I don't want to. That doesn't sound good. I don't want to catch the ball if I'm the jerk <laughs> or the sluggo. Throw it to the jerk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's get into our review from. Thank, that's our question mark question for the week, by yep. the way. We appreciate that. All right. Let's get into our review from last week. The games we covered mm -hmm. a week ago. You start out. Well, Delphi St. John's and Versailles, big MAC matchup and an important game because they're all trying to stay up with the, the guys that were undefeated, and there's one less now. But, uh, you know, you can't lose too many games to still have a chance to win in that league. So this came down to a missed PAT late in the game, had a chance to tie. You know, you looked at that, there were five PAT kicks. Four of them were missed. Tells yeah. you the importance of special right. teams, especially getting that extra point in there. Um, you know, Aaron Rindell scored three more touchdowns by our count. That's 14 touchdowns yeah. on the season. What a great year he's having. But a, a great game and a really good game for the Blue Jays because they're in the hunt now and ranked in the top ten all of a sudden. Hey, you know what? If you want to look at the Blue Jays, you know, each MAC team only plays eight schools. Delta St. John's does not play Marion local this year. All right. That's there a, you go. That's I mean, a good, that, that's, that's a good help like on a the win. schedule. That's sure. almost like yeah. a win. All right, let's go to uh, NWC matchup. Crestview defeats uh, Columbus Grove 28-25. There's another one of your PAT things. Columbus Grove missed three out of four PATs. Otherwise, each team has scored the same number of touchdowns. Drew Klein, three touchdown runs and a touchdown pass. Uh, Reed Stecksholy, three touchdown passes, a touchdown run. Big offensive game for both teams. Crestview comes out with a win. We're going to look at Shawnee and Van Wert. Neither of them had won a game yet, so somebody was going to get in the win column. Shawnee comes out on top, 28-26. A seven-yard pass from Ray Manley, a senior quarterback, to Jalen Bagley, a senior wide receiver. Seems how that happens late in the game. The poised kid, the veteran kids. That got the win. Coach Crea's first win as a Shawnee head coach, and I think it happened on the very last play of the game. Quite a celebration on the video. How about that? Spencerville and Ada, 22 for the Bearcats, 19 for Ada. 
In that particular matchup, Chris Picker, 102 yards rushing. His team rushed for 256 for Spencerville. Conley, another big night, 31 of 60 passes. A couple of them picked off, however. And again, in the Ada situation, two failed PATs cost them a game. Huge. You know, huge jet kicking game. The special team stuff is really, really important. Yeah. Well, let's get in now to our top performers of the week. And first of all, I want to go a little bit north of our area to Finley. The Trojans are undefeated. A lot of people have missed that uh, so far. But Deion Stinson, they've been running the football very well. Deion Stinson for Finley, 20 carries, 175 yards, three touchdowns as Finley defeats St. Francis, 42-13 uh, uh, to go 4-0 in the season. And a look at the running backs going wild. Two of them, almost 250 yards, one at 249. That's Eric Spicer from St. Mary's in their win over Kenton. He also had three touchdowns, over 250. 259 for Hunter Binkley from Jefferson, their win over Allen East. He also had three touchdowns, big weeks. When you got running backs that go for 250, you're controlling the game. Okay, we're going to skip over to Bluffton now. And Caleb Jefferson, 15 carries, 222 yards, 220 yards, two touchdowns. He also had a 67-yard and a 42-yard run in that mix. Caught a TD pass for 35 yards, three touchdowns for Caleb Jefferson this week as Bluffton defeats Paulding 42-14. to Crestview beat Grove in a very close Northwest Conference game. Quarterback Drew Klein from Crestview. 185 yards rushing with three touchdowns, 168 yards passing for one touchdown in that great win over Grove. And Liberty Benton, Austin May, their quarterback, 14 of 16, 202 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, Austin May also rushed for 68 yards. Liberty Benton defeats Van Buren, a big BBC matchup, and that was 28-14 in favor of the Eagles. And I got one more. You got one more. Yep, Harden okay. Northern. Quarterback Bradley Watts, 122 yards rushing, had three touchdowns. He also intercepted a ball and took it in for a touchdown in their win over Waynesfield Goshen. Good job by Bradley. Big win for them. Let's move on to our play of the week. And Mr. Miller, you get the telestrator out and go through our play of the week. Well, we got Coldwater and Fort Recovery. And this is in the second quarter. It's 12 7. Fort Recovery's winning. It's a punt return. Fort Recovery's going to punt it. And back to return this, number 20. You're going to like this. Nate Rindler, 64 yards. Yeah, he's going all the way. We're going to see it, get a chance to see it in slow motion, so we'll point some things out. But look at all the misses he makes. Nate also had a long touchdown reception. He was very important in this game. So let's see. Here we go. Got a couple of guys back, your personal protector. But a lot of times you got to say, hey, punt returner, you got to make a miss. There's a miss. Now you get to the wall. Bang, couple of linemen cutting back, shielding those guys off, still working downfield. Look at the guys working downfield. Now the cutback. Got to get back to some green grass. How many misses did Nate Rindler make all the way to the end zone? That was huge. That really flipped momentum for Coldwater, and they won going away in that one. Down at that point in the schedule, a big, big win for them. And, of course, we talked earlier about special teams play in kind of a negative fashion, missed PATs. Here's a big, big play for yeah, them. Special it was teams. huge for them. That really did change things around. All right, let's stay in cold water for our bright spot of the week. And, Mr. Miller, you were down there with our cameras, mm -hmm. had a chance to look at their new athletic facility. Well, you know, thanks to Chip Ott and the head coach and the athletic director, Eric Goodwin, they took us into the new building. They call it the Cavalier Pride Athletic Center, the CPAC. And they had been raising money for a long, long time to build this. I, I think it kind of started, at least we heard it, on the heels of John Reed's death several years ago. And this thing is beautiful. They got locker rooms for home and visitor, a training room, officials room. They have a coach's office where they do all their film breakdown, a mini weight room in the middle for some of the teams that don't want to go all the way back over to the high school to get a little lift in. Uh, football team uses it, baseball, softball. They even put tight net up at one end so the golf guys can hit it in there. This is a well-thought-out uh, building and and the signs that they have in there you, you you probably get in a view of of their championships I mean that's very very <laughs> impressive and then a sign that we took right there you're gonna see it look at that this is a sign up in the front of where the team meets it's right beside the screen and you'd think it'd say ah oh, we want to be 300 pound benchers we want to run to 40 and 4 or 5 we want to win by 20 points a game no none of that this is the most important sign in their locker room and it talks about how to be successful as a player and as a person, and it talks about trust, and talks about working hard, and talks about people being able to count on you. That's what a program is built on, not the, the stat kind of stuff, but the people stuff. You and I are from a little bit different generation. Mm -hmm. it, it was called, you know, athletics was a thing that you did extracurricular. It was a way mm -hmm. to learn things that you can't learn in the classroom. That's what that science is all right. about. Yep. Yep. That's what it's all about. All right, moving on to our Where Are They Now type segment. A couple of weeks ago, we looked at Jerry Cooper, the past LCC coach. And by the way, they did win again this week to go to 4-0 coming off their bye. But let's also look at Mike Fell and Mike Mock. Mike Fell, 
Tough loss for him this week out there in Mountain View, Mesa, Arizona. They had a loss to Mountain Point, 56 to nothing. Mountain Point is ranked, if you believe those USA Today polls, so not a, hmm. a particularly disappointing loss for them. Obviously, they got blown out, and they got another big game this week, a Brophy College Prep this week. They're also 5-0, and so another big game this week for Mike Fell. We want to look also at Mike Mock. Now, Mike, of course, the good news is he's battled through cancer. Yeah, that's that's the good thing. We're, we hear good reports about that. His team is 5-0 and at Glendale, Missouri, and doing the things you would expect from a Mike Mock <laughs> team. His quarterback, Houston, is 179 for 260, thrown for almost 2,700 yards and 30 touchdowns in five games. <laughs> he's got it going. They've got wow. a school called Parkview this week. They're 2-3. and three. Good luck for, to Mike Mock, of course, and congratulations on his battle with cancer. His yes. cousin... Greg Mock, the ladies basketball coach at Bath High School, had triple bypass surgery this week, and we wish him the best as well. Certainly. Yeah, good reports. Good coaches good just things. keep winning, right? Yes, sir. And we want to get Coach Mock back on the floor here as we head, um, you know, kind of into our preseason yeah. coming up here very early in, in November when girls start basketball practice. So good luck, Coach Mock. All right, let's move on to our games we want to feature this week. Uh, first of all, we want to look at Coldwater and St. Henry out of the MAC. And Mike, I look at the schedule, Mark. I thought there were four big games in the MAC this yeah. week. This is one of them. Yep. Uh, of course, Coldwater is four and zero. They're two and zero in league play. St. Henry three and one, two and zero in league play. They, they have uh, big wins over Parkway and New Bremen in conference play. The number one scoring defense in the MAC is St. Henry. They're giving up about ten points a game. They do that one loss to Covington in here. However, Coldwater has won what's called the backyard rivalry with schools what eight mm -hmm. miles apart. Yeah, very close. Cold Water has won this game 20 consecutive times. The last time St. Henry won was in 1996, an overtime game, 26-19. So big matchup this week for St. Henry in particular, but also for the Coldwater Cavaliers. Let's go to the Northwest Conference. Crestview, 4-0, 1-0 in the league. Spencerville, 3-1, 1-0. These two teams want to battle it out and stay right up in there. Crestview averages 36 points a game on offense. Spencerville giving up 13 points a game on defense, so something's <laughs> got to give there. What kind of a game is it going to be? Crestview, of course, has a great run-pass mixture. Spencerville, they just want to pound it. They got that multi-headed running attack with multiple guys that can carry it and carry it well. Last week, both scored with a minute or less to win against league foes. So they're coming off very emotional wins, and they will be fired up and ready to play each other. A big game in that league happens like every league. They've got big games in their conference as well. We also want to look at an NWCC conference game. This would be Perry and Sidney Lehman. Both teams are 2-2 two and two on the season and 1-0 and oh in conference play. Perry with the big offensive team. They average 34.5 points a game. The negative for Perry, they give up 40 points a game, and their games have all been blowouts one way or the other. And that, of course, a big game, of course, for, for Coach Herb Lane out there for his particular ball club. Sidney Lehman, Coach Dick Roll, they just always seem to have a good football team, roll things together and make the playoffs. They are 2-2 two and two right now. They have a two-point loss or one-point loss early in the season to Fort Recovery. They've beaten Graham. They've beaten USV in league play. They also average 34 points a game, but defensively they give up just 22 Perry with that big offense, nice defense over there at Sydney Lehman. We'll see who comes out in that NWCC conference matchup. Let's go to the Blanchard Valley Conference. Two of the leaders, both at 2-0 and in the league, Macomb and Arlington. But they do it different ways. Macomb averages 42 a game, giving up 11. All of their games have been blowouts, and they have won. Arlington, scoring 20, giving up 12. They play close games, except for their one loss was a blowout. But their, other, their wins have all been very, very close. Lipsick is also 2-0, kind of sitting there waiting for the winner of this one to see who's going to determine that league. Big game early on with Macomb and Arlington. That's our games we wanted to preview. Let's take a look at our broadcast schedule for this week. We have Van Wert and Kenton this week. That's one of our two conference games. And you and I will have the Minster Fort Recovery game this week. Minster is 2-2. Two and two. They are 0-2 in conference play. Fort Recovery 3-1. They're 1-1 one one in conference play. Uh, this has been a close game the last couple of years. Fort Recovery won twice last year. They won 14-12 and 33-21. Minster won 28-23 in 2014. So we should have a good matchup down at the Fort yep. Recovery this week. Well, supposedly, hopefully for them, the last game that Caleb Martin will have to sit out with that injury. Uh, he plans to be back next week against Delta St. John. And the other two games on our broadcast schedule are Crestview, Spencerville, and Lipsick and PG in the Blanchard Valley Conference. So, Mr. Miller, as I look at my wristband here, and I'm trying to decide whether we're going to run Jet 14 Zach Zip 18 Sweep with a duck on the end of it. I don't Is that what you tell your quarterback? Here's what that wristband should say. You and me, we're out. We're out of here. Thank you for watching A Closer Look. You've been watching High School Football on WOSN.